coming across those at the back, including our CEO, Lucy Shea, <laughs> to come and take a seat. Um, this is the first gathering here at Solutions House. So the back lot's going to fall down, the, the AV's going to go nuts, the, the, the thing's going to ping, and there'll probably be a fire alarm, because that's what happens when you have your first event in uh, a new event space. So my name is Solitaire Townsend. Please call me Solly, because Solitaire is a beautifully ridiculous name. <laughs> and I am the co-founder and chief solutionist at Futella. And in fact, I'm also here to welcome you into Futella. Because when this beautiful space that we're all in right now is not an event space, it's not a solutions house, it's filled with desks and with chairs and with busy people working away. Because this is actually Futella's office. So I want to thank all the Futerans for giving up their office space for us this week for Climate Week. Now, with the Exponential Roadmap Initiative and with Google, we decided to host Solutions House during what's already an incredibly busy Climate Week with the motto of Answers Only. And we decided to focus on Answers Only, which by the way is a sort of reminder, not a rule. We decided to focus on Answers Only because it's 2022. And considering where we are in 2022, we need to look at the problems for only long enough in order to invent solutions. Because if we spend too much time looking at the problem, perhaps we won't have the energy to do the answers that need to be done. Now, a few housekeeping points before we go on. I'm going to make sure I get these right, being with a host. We are not expecting a fire alarm, actually. But in case we do need to evacuate, um, I start putting on my very posh British accent. Please do take the stairs, which are here and at the back, down to the ground floor, and then the exits will be here and here. <laughs> uh, we'll meet out in front of the building if we need to, so please do not take the lifts. Do two, do, please do take the, um, the stairs if needed. There are two bathrooms towards the back here on the left. One of them is an accessible bathroom. Now, one of the things which really annoys me when I go to events is like them being a bladder marathon and not feeling that you're allowed to stand up whilst there's, whilst there's speakers going on. Please, respect the human, use the bathrooms. There are white noise machines back there if you need them. So let's, let's make sure the Solutions House is a welcoming place for human beings. If you need any help, there's people wearing the Answers Only t-shirts. Please do ask them for any help or chat to them. They're very lovely people. Um, and there should be Wi-Fi dotted around. Um, in fact, actually, Karen, could you just let us know what is the Wi-Fi code? Because I can't see any different codes. It's Answers Only with a capital A and a capital O. Brilliant. Thank you. So, so, so Solutions House, so look for the Solutions House Wi-Fi. You can choose between 2G or 5G, depending on how you're feeling this morning. Um, and then Answers Only, capital A, capital O. And once you get online, uh, can you please uh, tweet share, post, send it to the ether meta universe, uh, at solutions house, hashtag solutions house, and hashtag climate week NYC, if anything you hear this morning interests you at all. Um, and we do have some cables and some ways that you can power up because solutionists uh, definitely need their charge. Now, this morning, we've got quite a morning for you because this is uh, when we're talking about solutions economy and we're also going to be launching the 1.5 playbook. And it's my absolute pleasure to invite up to here to join us my co convener, um, Johan Falk from the Exponential Roadmap Initiative. Hey! Hi. 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 Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Okay, so we, we are the Exponential Roadmap Initiative. And a lot of us are here as well. We're part of the initiative <coughs> and other members. So our mission is halving emissions by 2030. And doing that through exponential climate action and solutions. And we'll hear much more about that in our sessions coming forward. So Sonny, I'd like to ask you a question. Why is the solutions economy coming up as an idea? Thank you so very much. Can you tell that we rehearsed this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for asking, Johan. I wasn't expecting that question. Um, uh, so, as we, were, as 
we were working on the idea of Solutions House, we were like, actually, this needs to be a bigger idea than just solutions are cool. Like, solutions are cool, but we need to be thinking, actually, less about individual atomized solutions and more about an integrated system of solutions. Um, now, Futawa, we're a change agency. So half of what we do is what we call uh, logic, where we work with our clients to set big goals and big strategies with folks such as PVS and, and Netflix and Google and others. And half of what we do is magic, and that's the storytelling and the marketing of sustainability. And for me, this, the idea of the solutions economy sits halfway between. The solutions economy is both about the systems and structures within which we are going to solve these issues around climate change and, and particularly around climate justice, and also the story we're going to tell ourselves whilst we do it. Because if we just have the structures without the story, it's only ever going to appeal to 80 people in a room. And if we just have the story without the structures, well, that's greenwash. <laughs> So, uh, right now, the economy that we are in has got a whole set of logical inconsistencies within it, which we all know. So there's a clear need, we've been, talked about the trillions that can be saved by radical action on climate change, and yet we've still got billions going on fossil fuel subsidies. So it's not as if we are currently in a logical economy. We're not. We are in an illogical economy, um, uh, which is radically defended by, uh, by some people despite the, uh, illog the, the illogic of it. And that illogical economy is already beginning to sort of pull at the seams a little bit. Um, I'd say actually we can see the cracks everywhere. And during Climate Week, and with UNGA going on at the same time, when we're talking about rising inequalities, when we're seeing the, the horror that is happening in Pakistan at the moment, when we're understanding the, 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 the inconsistencies between, um, between what we invest in and what we don't invest in, when we see the jokes online and the memes about late capitalism, those are the cracks. There's the cracks in the illogical economy. But there's an, one of the other reasons for the cracks is not just an old economy beginning to give way, but it's actually there's some of those cracks are appearing because of a new economy pushing to get out. So some of those cracks are because the foundations of the illogical economy are giving way, but some are because something else is trying to press through. And that new economy is where, in a century where climate effects will dominate, it's where solutions become the basis of how we actually drive our businesses, how we drive our societies, and how we drive our communities. And I think this year, in, uh, in April, when the IPCC um, came up with their six report, and in the working group three, I'm sorry, so many terminologies, so um, IPCC AR6 working group three, chapter five, for those of you who are following along at home, um, there's this fascinating chapter which is about demand-side changes. Demand-side changes is everything that everybody does every day. Almost the entire rest of the IPCC reports the last 20 years have been for policymakers and fossil fuel companies. That's essentially what it's been about. It's been about supply-side changes, regulation, and the economic control of fossil fuels. This one chapter, chapter five, about demand-side changes is what every other company does, is work on the demand side of energy. That's what scope two is, that's what scope three is. Demand side energy is what every single one of the seven and a half to eight billion of us do. We demand energy. We use it in our homes, in our travel, and um, in how we live. And so by recognizing the need for this demand side change, I would argue that the IPCC is focusing on a new solutions economy, because the solutions economy will be built by making money out of demand side changes. It, the solutions economy will be built about actually creating value by reducing demand. So I just wanted to close with a couple of things which here at Solutions House we want to call on for this week in terms of building the solutions economy. One is solutions capital. We've talked a lot about the trillions that are owed, the billions that are owed in loss and damage, about the money that is owed in terms of climate adaptation. We don't talk enough about the money that is required in terms of capital investment in solutions. 
We need radical invention and scaling of solutions. And we've been talking a lot about solution scaling. So if solutions capital is number one, solution scaling is the second thing which we're going to be talking about. There are so many amazing solutions. What they need is to actually be bought up to become the majority of the economy rather than the alternative. Obviously, we need solutions policy. We've got some great policy leaders and policy makers here in Solutions House to be talking about it. We need a solution story. We've got sessions this week with, uh, with media, with YouTube, with storytellers about how do we actually tell that story of the solutions to a public who are becoming increasingly afraid of climate change and less and less aware of what we need to do about it. And then finally, the fifth thing that we need for the solutions economy is solutionists. That's you. We need a league of solutionists. Hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of people around the world who have decided to only look at the problem for as long as it takes to come up with a solution. And that's what you are. That's why we're so grateful to have you with us here as a league of solutions here at Solutions House. So thank you very much for that spontaneous question. <laughs> and that I just had a few thoughts to, 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 to prepare for. Um, uh, so having given that outline, uh, that's sort of our vision of a solutions economy with the five um, uh, areas that need to be focused on. But I said nothing about how we're going to get there. Oh. So, Johan, have you got any thoughts about how we might get there? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, okay, science is very clear. We need to cut emissions by 50% every decade. But we will fail if we just focus on cutting emissions. If we cut emissions without having the substitutes, we will uh, end in economic collapse, as we can see in different systems right now. And that means that we need to have this laser focus on the solutions in energy, in regenerative agriculture, circularity, fossil free material, all these solutions, low carbon, zero carbon, that we need to scale up radically fast to shift out the old fossil economy, otherwise it's impossible as far as I see it. And we can't have a linear scaling, of course. We need to have an exponential scaling. But even that is not sufficient, because normal diffusion of solution is simply too slow, because we have so many blockers trying to block the diffusion of new solutions. We need to pull in these curves, and we need to double the pace, the pace of the doubling of the solutions. So that is what the strategy has to be about. Companies have an incredibly important role both as suppliers of solutions, but also in terms of demanding solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's what we will talk about today with the business playbook and reinventing supply chains. These are two key strategies in terms of driving solutions exponentially.